from Heal at Home Pet Care and today I wanted to show you how to make um, slippery elm bark. So this is something that I use pretty regularly with pets and what it is, slippery elm is a tree. So this is the inner bark of the tree and all it is is the bark just ground up. So it's ground up into a little pill. You can get it in a pill or you can buy um, just in bulk the, um, the bark already ground up without the capsule. Um, but if you buy a capsule, it's really easy to make this. And what I do is, you can either take a measuring cup or just a clean glass jar, which you need anyway to store this in. And I take the capsule, I open it up, and I put it into the jar. And then I put one to two tablespoons of cold water in with this. And what that does is, you shake it around. This has been sitting for about five or 10 minutes. And what it does, it makes this really slippery, gooey substance. So that's the slippery elm part of the bark. If you skip this step, you might not get all of that, those properties, and that's what you're looking for with this. Then the next step is to add hot water. So boil some water up. You can do this all in your measuring cup and then put it into a container after. And then I usually do about half a cup, which is four ounces of water. And then I just add that to the gooey slippery elm bark that I made up. Cap it up, just mix it around. And you're gonna see some particles floating around. That's just some of the bark, but um, there might be some fillers if depending on what you get, what kind you get. Um, but this is it. And then sometimes what you can do is you can add a little bit of honey to this. Um, you can add um, some sage leaves to it because that's also soothing. Um, or just use it plain like this. And I let this cool off and then it's ready to use. And what you can do is store this in the fridge for five to seven days. And when you smell it, it smells like a caramelly kind of thing. So it doesn't have a bad taste to it. And the way that I would give this to a pet is either, um, if they're not eating, I would take a little syringe or a teaspoon and give them about one ml on the syringe or about one fifth of a teaspoon per 10 pounds of pet. So, and just gauge it towards your pet. If you feel like this is a little too strong for your pet, if you have a cat who's kind of strange with weird tastes, you can water this down a little bit. If you have a dog or some, or for yourself and you can tolerate it more, you can make it a little bit stronger, um, but either way it works. And you can put this in yogurt, in food, in treats. It's best if you can give it by itself though because what it's gonna do, it's gonna coat the whole GI tract from the mouth. If there are ulcers in the mouth, it will help heal that. It will help heal any um, esophagitis that's going on, any ulcerations that are going on. It helps in the stomach and what it does is it's astringent, so it tightens up the stomach. It protects the mucous membranes. It's also anti-inflammatory, so usually when we have GI upset, there's inflammation going on, so it protects against that. And it also has um, nutrients in it. So most medications for GI symptoms are just um, getting rid of the symptoms, which is great because you don't want to feel nauseous or feel bad but this actually heals and gives some nutrients at the same time. So it has vitamin A, vitamin B complex, vitamin C, vitamin K, some calcium, magnesium, and sodium. So those are all great things to have in this. So they used to use this back in the Appalachians. Um, people would actually get strips of slippery elm bark and they would have, I think it was like a piece, a certain piece, like a four inch piece per person per day at the end of winter. And that's all they would eat. They had no food reserves left, they had nothing. And this would get them through the rest of the winter. So they would just chew on that piece for the day. And of course that's not a good diet plan, but it got them through um, because of the nutrients in it. If you are using slippery elm bark for your pet um, or for yourself, make sure to give it about one to two hours either before or after giving medication. Um, because it is astringent, it tightens up the stomach and it will probably not allow that medication to be absorbed in the stomach or the intestinal tract where it might need to be absorbed. So just make sure that you space that out a little bit.
So what this is good for is when your pet, usually in cats with chronic kidney disease, um, a lot of times the medications that they're given, they may help some cats, but other cats just do not, the medicines are making them sicker. And I found this to be a really good ally for something like that. Um, for dogs and cats that have GI upset, so any vomiting, diarrhea, um, for people with flu-like symptoms, if you take this, um, it can really, really help you get through that much easier. Um, so slippery elm bark, it's a really good thing. It's something that you should have at all times in your kitchen. It's really easy to make up and I hope this helps you and your pet. Feel free to subscribe below or to sign up for the newsletters for more tips like this. Okay, see you soon.